Our guest today is the amazing Lee Ehrenberg that you might know of Pirates of the Caribbean as Pintel or as Grumpy in Once Upon a Time. And what I would want to say is that if you have a role next to Johnny Depp, yeah. I think you have to be an amazing actor for uh, people to still remember you. And I definitely remembered you because you. that role was was actually hilarious that you had. So welcome, Lee, and thank, thank you so you. much for joining okay. us. Today. <laughs> thank you. It's great <laughs> to be here. And you know what? I will give, you know, I give 100% of the credit, not to myself on that one. It's always great writing, a good director, the crew that make you look good, right? My dialect coach that helped me get to like, so it's, it takes a village, so. Wow, yeah. Yeah, but you have to believe in yourself to land something like that. Yes. That's the deal, to even get the crack at it. And then you have to get out of your way and let your light shine through and just go for it. Oh, you speak my language, man. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, that's it though. That's, yeah. that is it. And, and I, you know, we do connect with, I do connect with your, with what you're working on because everyone has something special, right? And so the difference between the professional, say, actor, which is what I know about, um, and the person that wants to be the professional is a little bit of courage and a whole bunch of luck. But it's in the moment when they say action. Yeah. You got to bam. That curtain goes up, bam, right? That's when you bring it. That's what they pay you for. And that's what you love. That's the rush. And that's the game. All right. Yeah. So, so bring in the heat. Showing up. About yeah. how to show up. Yeah. Uh, showing up every day is hard. Especially in the arts when you don't have that going on, when the phone's not ringing and everyone goes through the lulls. So it's about managing being uncomfortable and getting yourself to the finish line and then fake it till you make it, you know? Yeah, I get that. I Showing get up that. is 90%, maybe 100% today, because so much is out of your control, right? Control what you control, your attitude and your effort. That's all you control. So if you it's set an intention, right? To start your day, uh, have a checklist. Don't live in, I don't, I, try, I get reactive. I want to be proactive. Yeah. It contradicts it. Sort of finish something, make your bed. There's that generalism, make your bed. It's so true. I don't always, but like, like days when I'm having trouble getting going, I might just get up, make the bed, done something, boom. Yeah, you know, I live at the beach. Then I'm going to the beach. Yeah, self care is a challenge. As artists, we all talk negative. My buddy calls it the negative insurgency. It's like a guerrilla fighter in your brain. Yeah, you know, I, it's the it's Star Wars. Be your own Jedi. I love the Jedi Council. Reach out, talk to someone. Good when you're coaching, like that's great for coaches. Like that's what they're yeah. there for. Therapist, a good wife, and it, that's what you should build your intimacy. I go to my kid. I'll go to the wife. I go to the dog, but I have to cultivate that because when I bring it here, when the light goes on, you know, I'm a motherfucker. <laughs> to stand next to Johnny Depp, yeah, hearing yeah. lately, I'm a short bald guy, you know. But I always believed in myself. That's amazing. And can you tell us a little oh. bit about <laughs> how you built that self-belief? Because I'm also, I'm a huge fan of Kira Knightley. I think she's the bomb. She did su such great work. So it's like you say, you know, you're standing there between you've Orlando Broom, you've, you've got Kira Knightley, you've got Jeffrey Johnny. Jeffrey Rush, Jeffrey Rush, Chow Yun-Fat, I mean. Yeah. Naomi Harris, 
my buddy Mackenzie, Kevin, Ballers, Bill Nye. Those movies were big. That was some big deal acting shit when you break it down and look at the players. Never thought of it one fucking time, girl. There you go. You don't, yeah. you don't think about that. Believe in yourself, right? It's scary. You have nerves. We all have it. We all have it. So make it work for you. It's disrespectful to be too nervous. That's true, because then you mess everything up. Probably. You're a professional. They want to see a pro. Like when you're auditioning or whatever, we're all nervous. It's like you're being tested. Now we do a lot of self-taping. You have more control over it. You can, you know, uh, do it over and over until you like it, till you like it. I don't, you know, I'm learning, I'm in class, you know? I like to stay learning and in, in, I'm in an acting class. I mean, I haven't been in it this summer because my kid's going back to school, blah, 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 the last, my accountability thing. Uh, but uh, I swear I get more challenged out of being in class, the scenes that come up there than I do the auditions, but I'm prepared. Yeah, there you go. So stay prepared. I mean, there's things you can do that are you're in your control. You can't control, only control what we worry about what's in your control. And, that, and that's a lot of the times where I fail in an average day. And then, but it's awareness, right? Thing is, we're, except first, because you have to realize that we all, we all fuck up. We all make mistakes. We're not going to get every, everything. There's only one winner in like a big tennis tournament or a, in a big golf tournament where hundreds of people compete, a bike race with 180 guys, whatever, right? And in acting, it's way worse. The numbers, the odds. So the odds are against you. Don't get into the business. Don't go to be an athlete. Don't do it. You can't hack it. The odds are fucking definitely against you. You probably will fail a sh bunch of times, right? So... But if you can't say no, but I still, I've got to do it. Welcome to the club. <laughs> you got to be a little crazy. Yeah, you've got to. <laughs> right? So manifest that, right? That manifest it. The pirate thing, the pirate thing, I was meant to do it. It was written in the stars. All our dreams are written up there. The match is always available to us, right? The key is, asking for it at the right time. When you're open to it, don't ask the universe to like show you the way and then walk your head down like this. You don't miss, you miss it. Stay grounded, centered and open. And it's about, that's about lifting weights. That's about feeling the earth. And that's definitely about acting and the, and the, and the high, and the high performance stress of mu rock and roll music or uh, Olympic diving or these great performers, you know, with the, I love sports. Right. And so like my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Right, so right, let's, let's get to that because Lee is starting his own YouTube channel. And if you would like to, after this interview here and see more of him talking about sports and sharing his vision and ideas then and movies and better. and actors that like sports and so we're just building it it's brand new it will get better life but you got to go for it so this was a thing like i had had a lot of resistance because i i'm used to a certain i like being an actor because they tell you what to do Those boundaries are, I'm going to be in my trailer playing online poker, bring me a burrito. And then when you call me, I'm grumpy in the woods, crying the snow. Yeah. Four in the morning, when the crew needs to get out of there because they're working them too hard, right? I got to come in there and know my lines and hit my mark and do it in one or two, especially TV. Movies, you get a little bit more time, but I'm not a star. So I got to get it the first time. Actors have to be a thousand and, you know, we're not allowed not to make something funny that's written funny. 
our job is to be, a, we don't get to be like in sport, you can miss a few shots. You don't have to be perfect. Some art, some arts need to be a lot closer to perfect yeah. to land it and stuff like that. So you're asking, you're trying to manifest something pretty big. Yeah. So you were talking about believing in yourself, right? And those negative thoughts and mm. the fact that we all fail. So can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because that is something that I see, you know, I've worked with, with people who, who have achieved so much yeah. and still that self-doubt, it's uh, always, it's always uh, there. It's paralyzing. Yeah. It is. In fact, I had to call it out because it was happening to me just over that doing a YouTube thing. Yeah. Right. So it's real. And once I, once I called it out to some buddies and I wanted accountability, I just wanted to get it going and they believed in me. And uh, then the next day, I yesterday I did it, but I had been sort of frozen and like, you know, making a mistake. I don't want to make a mistake. <sighs> there are no mistakes. You know, you will get body slammed in some ways. It won't be the way you imagine it to be. I yeah. make things like so scary and, and, you know, then I come from like this fearful place. Right. And I, when I can deal with it, I, it's like going to a party. I, sometimes I don't want to, you know, get that feeling. Oh, I'm just, I don't want to go, you know, and I'm the, then I'm having the best time. Yeah. So sometimes you just gotta do, like go for it. You got to surrender. My big <gasps> in life <laughs> yeah. that's awesome i forgot that word in terms of like you know in terms of the arts but for sure turn it over yeah surrender all outcomes in fact yeah exactly exactly 100 percent. and oh, and i've noticed that every time it doesn't matter who you are where you came from or what you already achieved in life every time that you want to do something new there's going to be resistance. And I like to say like, you know, new level, new devil. We've got to deal with it. We've got to face it head on. And that's the only way to move through it and achieve that feeling of, all right, you know what? We've survived, we've did it. And every time it will get easier and easier just by doing it. I like the Stoics, Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, the kind of Roman general philosopher guys, you know, uh, there is no honor in the battle where there's no peril. The, the Roman general that just walked in and wiped someone out was never honored like the guy that in his army, it's they fought to the fought toughly and bravely, right? So that's, we have to be willing to be the war, warriors for whatever we want. Just got to choose, I think, like the word, I mean, I think about boundaries. Yeah. Right? So only draw a boundary you're willing to die for. Don't have too many. Have appropriate ones. Yeah, there you go. And it's with, right, just the appropriate, especially for your, the way we talk to ourselves. How about this one? Do you know that, well, I'm sure you do, but if someone says, to me, hey man, uh, you did a great job, right? And my first response is you too, or something like that. Um, I'm not allowing myself to sit with that nice compliment. Yeah. If someone says something negative, I believe it in one second. Exactly. The positive yeah. comment, I th I've heard it takes like 13 seconds to sit with it. So a generous thing would be like, great job. Oh, thanks, man. That makes me feel really good to hear it. You catch the comment, receive it, let it go boom. And then if you feel like, man, you, that was really funny what you did or whatever, right? You can, then you give it back. Different conversation, different energy. Yeah. I remember because I, I mean, myself, do you know what I used to do in the past when someone gave me a compliment like, oh, you know, I love your sweater. Oh, but you know, it was really cheap. I would bring myself down in order to put the other person 
like above me or something. But after, you know, doing this inner work and getting in my own power, I started to realize that what you're doing is saying, you know what, here you go. Fuck you. I don't want your beautiful gift. But by just receiving it and being grateful and thankful, then you're actually, you know, giving them the best gift in return because that is what they said that, you know, what, why they gave you that yeah. compliment in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I do a lot of like conventions, fan shows. And I, pr I am so grateful. It's tough to sit there and be nice to everybody that comes up. But that's a, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. But the key thing is save some for when you get back home. So always keep some in reserve, like generate extra. That's free. It doesn't cost you anything to smile, receive the other people's energy. It build it. There's nothing better than a, the audience going and doing it and you hear that and oh my god and not in an ego way because what i'm learning too is um a boy and i guess I, i'm i see this and not in a sexist way with this state this the quote but a, a man doesn't become a man until he kills the ego of the boy the boy's ego so the the maturity is, is that awareness and control and dealing with the ego. Yeah. Being just aware of it. I, I mean, I don't, I don't succeed all the time in this issue, but at least now I'm aware that it is a fucking issue. Yeah, that you, you've got to start there. Otherwise we're just stuck within the hypno, you know, the hypno of the ego. And the ego is actually the, biggest killer of dreams because oh. that is the only reason why we wouldn't go all out or why we wouldn't shine our light because our ego is afraid for the reactions or is afraid to step on someone's toes while actually you're lifting them up by shining your light you're stepping on your own toe yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah okay beautiful yeah Thanks. that's really good stuff it's really good stuff because <laughs> it is it is the deal you know like we step on our own toe all the time most of the biggest number of wounds in the world are self-inflicted in the stuff we tell ourselves yeah we have we have no i have no idea how you perceive me i have no idea how i'm being perceived right now on your YouTube channel, right? But I turn that over to the perceiver and I just worry about my side of the street. Be interesting, try and connect. This is amazing stuff. We share this energy and this conversation on a computer across the world to potentially hundreds, thousands of people. Interesting. You know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of stuff that this is manifesting, taking advantage, being grateful that we're in a place that has wireless internet and my ring light and blah, blah, blah. And fresh fruits, as I can see, which is, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> what about this stuff? You know, we have to, we compose our backgrounds in Zoom world. Like what's in the shot? I was like, yeah, there's painting in there Ooh. over there. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we are, but that's only because I want to give you something interesting, you know, and in your viewer, right? Caring, being generous, being of service to others without looking for credit. It's how you get the cool shit. Yeah. I've, I've noticed doing this work that when we feel insecure or when we need the credit or the confirmation or the affirmation that actually you won't receive it because your brain is so programmed to see this negative vision of yourself. It has this underlying subconscious belief that you are not good enough. So it won't even notice those compliments we were talking about earlier. Right. I so, mean, we're not, 
yeah, it's all about letting it in, not being defensive, listening, being a sounding board. Even in this conversation, I find myself trying to jump in and finish things. It's hard because I'm excited and, and we're, we're performing and I'm getting my, you know, I'm, these are the hits I need. Right, the same hit the athlete needs to get in front, the roar of the crowd, the performance thing. This is me on, this is being captured, right? So how do you bring your best self in that moment? You don't, you wing it a lot of the time, you know? Um, try and be truthful. Honesty is the big thing that we haven't, one big word we haven't even really brought up yet in terms of, like just being honest to yourself and honest to the world. Tell the truth. Less tricks, more truth. Yeah. But you have to you have to give up all the stuff in, in an ideal world, and um, like drop the stuff. Just worry about what you control. Do you know this book, The Four Agreements? No, I, I haven't heard of it. So check it out. The four agreements. I, mean, I think it's an old one from the seventies or whatever, but basically the four agreements are like your word is your bond. Number one, number two. And again, I'm not hundred percent sure. So the experts can check on this one. Uh, <laughs> your word is your bond. Um, number two is don't take things personally. Number three is don't make assumptions. And number four is Always try your best. And that's it in this book. That's kind of the thing. But when you find yourself having conflict with a bunch of things in your life, I realize that at the end, it's probably me that has the problem. I'm probably the problem. You're like, oh, this guy cut me off in traffic. I didn't get this role. I didn't, uh, everything. Oh, the two left a dish in the sink, whatever it is, right? Um, it's usually me that's the problem. And if you're willing to accept that, that's where it starts with being truthful to yourself and, and, and making shit happen. Because I struggle, we all struggle. It's just having the tools, having the faith. And then in that moment, when they call your name, show up. Show them what you got, kid, and kaboom. Hope you're good that day. Hope it's great. Everyone, I'm, I'm going to be 60 years old next year, 59. Ooh, 60, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, right? It's just, a, I was like, wow, 60. I never, it's a scary age when you're 18 to think you'll be one day 60. You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, like the miracle, so many people didn't make it. Be grateful, right? You know, it's been a, come a long way, baby. Right. Yeah, so the, I, the awareness. By doing this work and by working on yourself and by keep on growing, that you were able to become this person who is so grateful that he's turning sixty and that he's having a beautiful life and that he is able to do auditions and that you know you can join us here today for this conversation and have fun with it right and go with it and go with it and be open and available yeah. right to share my stuff yeah right because that's the key thing i would say that on a daily basis bring your sometimes you have to like suck it up there's going to be times when you don't feel like it or you're, uh, and you have to push through the negative vibe. The, and it comes in forms of procrastination. I'll do it later, blah, blah, blah. I, 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 sometimes I even call it out. As long as you're calling out, I'm having a lazy day. Good on you. You got to do that. Mental health and all this part of the process, know you're, what's going on in there. But sometimes I like a deadline for that reason. It's due at 9 a.m. Get on it. 
you know? Yeah, I'm the same. I need my deadlines. Right. But, you know, it's true because we, we think that mental health means that we have to be like energetic or happy or, or high on energy all the time. But mental health is actually embracing when you have an off day, accepting it, and then yeah. filling it as much as you can with things that do give you energy or sometimes don't, but just feeling still okay with it and accepting it. And from there on, it's so much easier to move forward again. Than I say after three days, you're making a choice. You're making a choice after three. External circumstances might get you going, but on day three, you're making a choice to stay in the funk. So that, you know, that gives you a little leeway <clears throat> because life does throw some haymakers, right? They swing it, wham, wham, right? And you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And so it can be emotional and, and acting for sure. You get your hopes set up, set up to get a gig. And you put your, your soul and your heart into these auditions and then they ghost you and you don't hear shit, you know? So you have to go the next time. And how do you do that? And how do you do that for a career, not knowing where your paycheck's coming from? Sometimes for a while. So the faith, there, you gotta be smart and tactical and figure other stuff, right? Obviously in this day and age. But more I'm talking about the, the brain of the artist, the brain of the performer. So that's yeah. that's my that's my happy place <laughs> the brain of the artist and the performer yeah that's because that's where all the gain is that's where you know where we can really excel and really achieve both success and happiness because there's no way that you can lead a fulfilling life if one of the two if that is what you aspire is yeah. not in check you know right you want to fill the you want to you want to live a um a good life. How would you want to torture yourself? Yeah, it's all about life quality. That's that's to me, I've learned that money is fun and time is fun, but both mean absolutely nothing if your life quality, if you're not feeling good in your own skin, if you're not feeling like you're enjoying your life and you're fulfilled by what you do, then what do those things mean? Absolutely nothing because they will never bring you the joy of the fulfillment and to me i'm i'm i always say to my husband i'm a i'm an and and person not an or person so i would say money time and fulfillment you know right. it can all be there i believe you don't that have to make choices or sacrifice yeah and i think the key to that a lot of ways is gratitude yes i get some like funky people that you know Whenever I, somebody, my friends will be like, oh, blah, 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 this and this and this. I said, you know, make a gratitude list. Just jot down like three, four things you're grateful for right now. And it usually counters it because like, you can have more than you know, you realize. So yeah, I, I'd like to, I think I'm an ad person too. <laughs> I am an ad person. Or is a choice you give when you're trying to like get your kid dressed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? You're like, you can have this jersey and or this one, but you know, choose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever it is, right? So in life there, we do need choices, but you can choose to go for the like it's a home run business, right? Like you want to manifest the um, energy flow of the superstar, even when you work at the restaurant, even when you own the, the car mechanic, whatever it is, because you, at the end of the day, we, knew, we learned this in the pandemic, everyone's essential. Everyone's essential, be the, be the most essential you, you know, you're worth protecting, <laughs> like, you know, Everyone's valuable. I, I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's like, to me, it's sad. We lose so many people. Horrifying, terrible. So I had to deal with that. Yeah, so 
you know, the, uh, uh, the truth of it is we do need to be like more Bob Marley. One world, one love, and do that to yourself. Start always here. When you're telling, hey, do this, I really mean this. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. You know that one when, they, when you point at someone, it's really three fingers pointing back at yourself. My mom used to teach me the same thing. She, she used to say that over and over again. Yeah, check those other three out. I'm like, shit, you know, there you've got her again. But but that is the most valuable and most beautiful gift that you can share with us for, for closing our conversation because gratitude is key. Yeah. and look inward and and connect with the love because yeah. we are all the energy of love and we are all connected in that way so when we focus on that love within ourselves we focus on the love that right. we share with others if, and you will attract more of the same of course if you want to be loved love others and love yourself of course but you're yes. in there you have to love yourself yeah Self-love is the hardest part of the whole deal. So maybe the, maybe the lesson on this is that we all struggle with this and that we're all in it together. And so when you can benefit from a good coaching or from anything you might learn in a, you know, in, in a Zoom uh, YouTube, um, harness it. Use it. We're all in this together. We're all just throwing ideas out there, trying to improve right? And I am super grateful to get to talk about it, to learn what you are doing. I'm going to, I'm a, now a fan, obviously. That's and, nice. <laughs> yeah, because I honestly, I do think that it's like, it's exactly what the lessons I need to acquire and that I have been working on for many, many, many years. So kindred spirit. Yes, absolutely. Oli, thank you so much for opening up and for sharing these, these beautiful insights with us today because I am so convinced that people are really going to get beautiful, beautiful, not just the insights, but also the motivation again, just the, the, the loving reminder of doing the inner work, of loving themselves first, of letting go of the ego, all those beautiful things that you shared today. Wow, this was really, this was a master class. This was not uh, a, this was a master class. It's a TED talk, but whatever it would be. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and you know what though, this stuff, when I talk about it, it's really me talking to myself. Yeah. Right, you wanna like, I, was, I told this to my wife the other day, I was like, you know, I'm so great at giving advice to other people. I'd like to work on giving it to myself more, the same advice. Because you find yourself saying something to someone and it's really you're talking to yourself. So just know that we're all in it together. You know, the, it's all about managing being uncomfortable and then harnessing it for the good. Yes, yes. Because we don't control like what the, my dog starts barking or, you know, my kid wants help with homework. You know, be of service, put the other people first. And then you, it's funny how that, when you do that, you have more time and you're available. <laughs> when I'm like, hey, I'm ready to help. Oh, I don't, I'm good, I got it. So just be available and emotionally available. Emotionally available. That is actually a beautiful one that a lot of people don't even know how to do it anymore. But I think we're going to need like, a second interview to yeah, for sure we should do one for sure we should keep the conversation going yeah yeah, yeah this yeah, was amazing like we're the best and you you know what we're going to do we're going to share your youtube link in the comments so that people you know can check you out over yeah. there as well and support my your vibe's team. totally different because i'm talking football and uh but it's yeah, interesting okay. no i know <laughs> it's all related because it's really just me doing whatever yeah. And trying to, uh, you know, trying to explore ways to connect. Yeah. So you'll still be you and you'll still share these golden nuggets in between 
those sports moments or those movie moments because that is also who you are and and so yeah. people will really be able to connect with you as a person when they look at your show as well you're like you know the int- what i'm already what i really like about you it's really powerful how you i feel like you get me you get me you understand like the struggle of the high performer you understand the struggle of the high sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's, I, I'm, it's easy to connect and open up with you because you get it. And yeah, that's no, always I, a great I, place I, to have a conversation when you feel yeah. heard. Yeah. Because I was, I was that struggling high performer and I was that, you know, person who didn't know how to use the, advantages and the and the gift of the highly sensitive aspect so i i i know what it i i know what it is to be at rock bottom and i know what it feels like to not be there you know and to feel yeah. good and to step into your own light so that is why we do this and why we share finding this. your light finding your light is a mantra of my training as a theater actor so that is so beautiful. Like when you're on the stage, the stage of life, Shakespeare, all the world's a stage. Yeah. Find your light, people. That it's is like into my Zoom light, trying to you know, and it's it's usually a shift to find your light when they when someone says to you, "Find your light," it's not a jump around. The light is there. It's usually just a little more weight on the right side, or a little more weight on the left. Right? So we, it, sometimes the fix to get what you want is just a little, it's a subtle, sometimes subtle adjustment. Yeah. We're fine-tuned, you know, human beings are fine-tuned engines and fine-tuned race cars. <laughs> different, different strategies and tools maybe, but the concept is definitely- No, but I always say toolbox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they That's need exactly- to- so do we <laughs> I have an emotional toolbox yes. that is what I call it it's my toolbox sometimes I need a hammer sometimes it's just a pair of pliers sometimes a big saw and it chops my head off <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, totally I, feel totally you. I feel you yeah for sure and you know what the more that you are aware of this and the more inner work you do the bigger your toolbox gets and the easier it is to just take whatever you need whenever you need it. And that's when, when life starts to get easier and more fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think that there's an old joke. The, um, the patient walks into the psychiatrist's office, sits in the chair, goes, Doc, I just want to be happy. And the psychiatrist goes, happiness is overrated, you know? <laughs> so it's like, Truth is like, be okay. Because we're not going to always have the, the way to manifest the super high. The rock star is not always on stage. The actor's not always on stage. I'm not always in front of the camera. So in my intimacy, I'm not a diva. I'm not being pampered. I'm just a regular dude. Oh my, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know, thanks. No, but I'm saying get off your own emotional thing. Yeah. You're not entitled to that. Have a more honest view of how you see your shit. And then the world, and then be generous and give. And be. The superstars always just want to be treated like a regular person. Yeah. That's the way to win the superstar. When you're a fan, you come up, not I'm, but come up to the biggest fans of the of stars of the world, treat them like they're regular people. Exactly. That's what I've noticed as well, because they are. And you should respect the cleaning lady who is cleaning the toilets just as much because, you know, that superstar also likes to clean the toilet, you know? Do you know that I say in the conventions, and I think there's other clips of it out there, where I talk about the garbage man's more important than the movie star. (laughs) In a way he is. Because actors don't like to pick shit up. Yeah. And so we are organized in our society, like um, with the wrong priorities. 
right? There are certain, the, the certain things, and I'm not talking the essential from the COVID thing, I'm talking about like, we need a roof over our head. We need access to clean water. We need food. We need clothing, okay? And then pretty soon after that, and sanitation, and pretty soon after that, we need entertainment. Yeah. We need culture. It's right there in terms of making our civilization flourish. So we're essential too. But our job as the performer and the entertainers of the world is when the garbage man is done with work, when the nurse is done from her shift, when the school teacher is done, when the soldier's watching a movie, that we entertain them, make them laugh, make them think, make them cry. So the next day they can go back and do their essential thing. Oh man, I had a great laugh watching Grumpy on Once Upon a Time. Or oh my God, did you see that Johnny is so in Pirates, Captain Jack? Look at Captain Jack changed the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did for sure. He did. But then again, also you know the, the duo of you and your your yeah. colleagues. <laughs> you have to be honest, the Pirates would not have been the Pirates without those two no. guys. Thank and God, great writing. Guys that wrote those movies wrote Shrek, wrote Aladdin. These are legendary screenwriters. Legendary, genius guys. That The way they compose what we see. You so, should introduce me to them. I would love to pick their brain as well. <laughs> for sure, that would, be a, that would be a hell of a ride. You better buckle up. You thought yeah. I was. <laughs> I love that. I love a good old ride. No, yeah, because they're way more on the intellectual, right? I mean, with me, you get the, my thing is my, energy right that performer thing yeah those guys are way smarter than me but that has nothing to do with being smart and i, I know that you know that too but it's just and that was me just saying that i needed a compliment about how smart i was oh but there whatever. you go <laughs> nailed it <laughs> um <laughs> no but the, i but the thing is right that that's the key to understanding who you are that you don't you you don't do it alone so you might as well bring your best to give because you want to be generous always give your best for the other people yeah that's one that's one way to get out of your head let's do it for someone else yeah i i i did that when i started my coaching business when i was afraid to launch videos and uh, you know, had those stupid comments like, oh, you know, she loves to make movies of herself. Well, that was not the case. But, you know, you have to, because I always thought if there was one person who's feeling inspired or acknowledged or not as alone anymore because of what I shared, then the mission is accomplished, you know? Bingo. And that yeah. helped me overcome all those fears of doing the things and stepping out there and be vulnerable, because that is what we are doing with conversations like these. Sharing it anyway. Yeah. Like that's another level of it. Like you owe the other person in conversation to be available when it's th that kind of conversation. Right? Yeah. And uh, so it's a way to respect the audience, respect your opponent, respect people you deal with in your world. And that's how you get your respect is to give it away. There you go. Biggest tip of the day. Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. I do hope yeah. that we can continue this conversation soon. Anytime. You know how to reach me. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.